In this video, I'm going to explain the basics of what hardware you should consider for hosting a server at home. But make sure you watch to the very end where I'm going to reveal one of my best kept secrets for small server hardware. I get a lot of emails and comments on my web hosting videos asking for more specific help than what I've already provided. It seems like there are quite a few people interested in this, but need some help. So I'm going to answer some of those questions in a new series of videos on home hosting. Because there are so many variables and different ways to attack these challenges, I'm going to get as detailed as I can, but in the end, you have to decide what is best for your application. But as always, if you have more questions, you can always hit me up in the comments section or shoot me an email at ldsreliance at gmail.com. I'm happy to help you guys out. I just ask that in return you subscribe to my channel and consider giving my videos a thumbs up and commenting on them to help me out. So the first topic we're going to tackle in this video series is hardware. Every website or hosted application needs a server to physically reside on. But before we talk about server specs and what to look for, you need to think about the size and scope of what you want to host. This is super important because you don't want to purchase hardware that is underpowered for your needs or waste money on a huge server when a simpler and cheaper solution will work just fine. Let's take a small website for an easy example. Let's say you want to host a simple business website for your small business with a dozen or so pages. Nothing fancy though, with no user logins or e-commerce systems or streaming media or anything. And we're expecting minimal web traffic of, let's say, 100 visitors per day. This is an informational website that's intended to validate a business and provide contact info. So, now that we know the parameters, I can tell you this scenario is pretty easy from a hardware perspective. A site like this could easily be hosted on an old PC that you have laying around, or even a Raspberry Pi. The hardware resources required to serve up HTML pages is very, very minimal. So rushing out and buying a brand new state-of-the-art server would be kind of like killing a cockroach with a rocket launcher. Now let's say we have a different scenario. Let's say you want to host an e-commerce website with a shopping cart system and you're expecting a thousand unique visitors per day. This is probably best for a data center, but for the sake of argument, let's say you're going to host something like that at home. Now you do need a proper server for this application, but you still don't need bleeding edge technology. For something like this, I would look for a used server that's about four or five years old that had really good specs for its day. I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but you can find used servers in great condition for pretty cheap, and that will be plenty of power for a single e-commerce page with a few dozen items and reasonable traffic numbers. So why did we choose different hardware for those two scenarios? First, let's consider the type of visitor that you're expecting. In the first scenario, we were expecting some casual traffic that's checking out our business. They probably got our business card at a trade show, or their friend told them to check us out. These types of visitors are only going to spend a few moments on our site and then their next step to engage with us is going to be off of the website when they call us or shoot us an email. But in the second scenario, these visitors are going to spend a lot more time on our site. All of their engagement is going to happen on the site as they shop and possibly purchase something. And since we're expecting more visitors, we could see several people doing this at once. So next we need to consider the load that our different types of visitors are going to put on our hardware. The casual visitors in the first scenario that are viewing simple HTML and CSS web pages for a short period of time don't use much processing or memory. We don't require a lot of disk space either. But in the second scenario we not only serve up web pages, but those pages are making calls to a database that is running on the server as well and each visitor may be required to log in with some credentials to make a purchase, which will also use the database and put more strain on our hardware. And we have to store all of that data for accounting and customer service purposes, and also in case those customers return someday to make another purchase. So the database and security of an e-commerce site put a much bigger strain on compute, storage, and memory resources. Finally, we need to consider the cost of poor performance or downtime. What are the consequences if a visitor to our website has a bad experience? The more casual visitors in the first scenario are a little bit more tolerant and arguably less important to the success of the business. But please don't misunderstand me. If your site is broken or it takes 10 seconds to load a page, these visitors will walk away. So you need to ask yourself, what is the cost if they do walk away? Will you lose a sale? 
Maybe, but probably not. The majority of this traffic, in my experience, is not going to engage with our business. But in the second scenario, we very likely could lose a sale because those visitors are there to shop. So we can't afford any downtime or sluggish performance, and thus we will require a stronger server setup. We also need some redundancy in our hardware, so we will probably want redundant power supplies, hard drives, and network ports to minimize the risk of downtime due to hardware failures. Okay, so now we have a pretty good idea of what kind of hardware we need. How do we get it? In the first scenario, almost any dedicated hardware will work. Maybe you have an old laptop laying around that you aren't using anymore, or maybe you bought a Raspberry Pi to play around with and want to put it to an actual real-world use. As long as you can install Linux on it and nothing else will be running on it, you should be fine. I personally like to build my own little 1U servers with embedded CPUs, but I put multiple websites on the same box, so that's a little bit overkill. The second scenario, however, is a lot more complicated. As I mentioned earlier, this is where we want to find a purpose-built server for our hardware needs, but we don't need to go out and buy something brand new. Luckily, corporations only use servers for four or five years until they consider them obsolete and replace them with new ones. There are companies that will buy out all this old equipment for pennies on the dollar and then resell them. This results in a huge supply of cheap, decent equipment that will still run well for another four or five years at least. In the United States, eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace are great places to find these used servers. I like to use eBay because these sellers have a reputation to uphold and I get some buyer protection. Most sellers aren't going to sell you junk because you may give them a bad rating or return the item. But wherever you go for the server, there are a few things to look for. I would recommend getting something like this with multiple CPUs and as much RAM as you can find. Back when these servers were brand new, multiple processors would cost hundreds or thousands of dollars. But the difference between a single processor and dual processor Xeon server that's used is going to be like 20 or 30 bucks. All told, you're looking at a price range of about 200 to 400 US dollars, depending on the specs and the age of the equipment. Just make sure before you make your purchase that you look at how expandable the storage is. Look at what hard drives and cages fit in the server. The last thing you want to do is buy a cheap server that uses really rare hard drives that cost an arm and a leg because they're hard to find. At the end of the day, we all have a budget to work with, so do the best you can with the money you have to spend. But hopefully these tips will help you make a decision and get ready for the next topic that we will discuss next time, which is operating systems and software. And now, as promised, here is my bonus pick of a really nice piece of hardware for you to consider for certain home hosting needs. This is the Synology DS720 Plus, which is a two-bay network-attached storage device but this model can do so much more than just store your files. It actually has enough processing power and expandable memory to run multiple virtualized servers. And if you aren't familiar with Synology, they have great app support. They even offer officially supported apps that can be installed to run a Windows network with Active Directory and DNS server and everything. I deploy these sometimes to my small business customers to run their whole business off of one inexpensive box. But for the purposes of this video and home hosting, at about 900 US dollars, once you add two large hard drives and some extra RAM in the mix, this is a versatile choice to consider. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you were able to learn something. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below.